Uh, thank you very much for the organizers who have done an amazing job. And thank you to Mr. Glubmasta, if you're up there somewhere, for doing my speech. And uh, final thing is, because I give so many links in this talk, I've uploaded a website where you can go there and you can find everything. And I have a lot of quotes, so that's why I'm going to carry some notes. So um, first thing I would like to talk about is a quote by Dr. Robert Schiller, who's an economics professor in Yale. And I want to read it in its entirety. Advanced technology often means that a smaller number of people supply their services over a wider area, producing a winner-take-all effect where only the best do well and these lucky few command enormous incomes. The invention of the phonograph did this for singers. The invention of the motion picture did this for actors. Proliferating communication and information technology may do the same for other occupations in the future. There is absolutely no may in that last sentence. The way that we use information technology and the exponential growth of information has changed. It's been going on for about a century now, and it will continue to grow. So basically, shift happens. And also, good ideas spread out, uh, uh, spread out with talks like TED. Now, when I was first asked to give this talk, I thought, you know, what the hell? It can't be that difficult. Uh, talk about something I've been doing for, you know, 20 some years now, I care to, hate to admit that. But the more that I looked at this situation, the more I realized I am more like Homer Simpson than I care to admit. And trust me, that hurt. So the first thing that I thought of is doing something like statistics or probability, but Hans Rosling and Tim uh, Hartford, uh, Tim Hartford of the uh, BBC show More or Less. Okay, now there's a fantastic quote from the leadership that I'd like to give. When you meet your superiors, acknowledge them, respect them, then put your tail between your legs and run as fast as possible before they see you. <laughs> so if uh, knowledge is a drop of water, they were certainly creating a lake. So the next thing I thought of is doing something about stochastic modeling or probability theory. Hmm. Bruce Buena de Mesquita, Kevin Slavin. Again, respect, sirs. I'm not going to beat you. So then I thought, OK, uh, history, knowledge, <sighs> something like that. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to beat this one. Except for one thing, Jody, if you ever see this lecture, call me. Please, call me, OK? So then I thought, OK, go the default position, economics. I'm a professor of economics. I should be able to, to say something about economics. Nope. <laughs> so uh, after doing this, I thought, OK, what would any self-respecting economist do? And the answer became obvious, procrastinate. And go to Vilnius. So in Vilnius, uh, basically five things happened to me. Uh, on the bus, I do really discover that I'm more like Homer Simpson than I care to admit. Uh, I listened to a lecture by Gen Jonathan Alter, who gave it to the Commonwealth Club of California. Amazing site. Please go visit it. Uh, then I read a Financial Times article, which I even have here. Groupthink is more no match for individual genius by Christopher Caldwell. Then I went to a lecture by a guy called David Weekly, amazing individual. Please read his blog. And then, last but not least, I ran into a stereotypical American from Texas. Wow. OK, so uh, as Bruce Buena, de, Bruce Buena de Mesquita said in his lecture, we have to do a little bit of maths. So sorry. So what do the three things have in common? Credit cards. Bacteria, a nuclear bomb, OK? The three things are all exponential functions. Now, the interesting thing about an exponential function is that it is a change in the function with respect to time that is measured as a percentage change, not a constant change, a percentage change. So rather than look at a formula, let's look at an example. World's population. The change is represented as a percentage of the base. So the smaller the base, smaller the change. The larger the base, the larger the change. So what we see is things start off slow, but then as they go and the base gets bigger, you see this exponential growth exploding. Now the interesting thing is because it's a constant change of percentage, I can choose anywhere along this curve, blow it up, and the curve looks exactly the same. So even though towards the tail end you see large nominal changes, and you think, wow, this must be important, from a percentage point of view, it's a constant change. Now, here's where we're at, uh, but this is a TED Talk for another day. So I want to contrast this with what's called a linear function, and this is how people think. Okay? Now, 
when people think they want to look at things changing in a constant way because it's easy to understand. Input, output. So let's give an example of a linear, well, almost linear function. Uh, the world's uh, food. Okay, now this is actually non-linear, but it's close enough, you get the idea. It doesn't explode all of a sudden. Okay, it just kind of moves along for a little bit and remains at a constant pace. Okay. Uh, I want to talk to an example of how you create knowledge. So let's take a coin here. All right. So standard coin. And when we talk about knowledge, it's, it's more than just measurements. It's more about understanding. Okay, so I flip this coin a bunch of times. What I'm doing is creating a thing called data otherwise known as hard numbers. Heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, 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 tails. After I get this data, what I'm gonna do is something called statistics, and in using statistics, I'm gonna turn that into information, which is what Hans Rosling does much better than I ever could. Now, once I have the statistics, and I say something like the probability of heads is always gonna be 0.7, what that means is knowledge. This is not a fair coin. So, given this knowledge, and this is where I wanna focus on this lecture, you can also do something that's called strategy or info data, which means maybe I shouldn't bet on this coin, or if I do bet on this coin, I better bet heads every single time. Now, next model that we have to look at is the following. It's a Shannon information, or Shannon information theory. I have an information source. I have a piece of knowledge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and transmit this thing to a destination source, you. So how do I do that? Transmission. It's called a TED Talk. Now, in order to do this, I have to encode the idea that I have in my mind. Okay, now unfortunately, because I'm a bit of an idiot, it has to be English, uh, I, my language skills are terrible. So I encode this into English, and I transmit this. Now there's always gonna be noise whenever I uh, transmit this signal. And because there's always gonna be noise when I transmit this signal, it's not going to be a clean signal. It never will be. You get the information, you decode it, and hopefully, the destination, you, has some piece of knowledge in their brain that is somewhat similar to what I'm thinking. But because signal-to-noise constant, or signal-to-noise ratio is always a constant, it is a mathematical impossibility for that to be true. So because it's a mathematical impossibility, what that means is we have uh, evolution. So we have idea evolution. We have mutation. My idea goes to you. Now, most of you probably won't get something similar, but some of you will even have a better idea than what I had, and I didn't even intend it, okay? Trust me, I don't intend a lot of things in my life. All right, so uh, this has an effect. It's called the knowledge effect. And the knowledge effect basically goes something like this. People are like neurons, okay? We're slow and we're stupid individually. But when you take these neurons and you put them together, in parallel, and they freely communicate, you get exponential growth in the amount of information that they can process. Now, the other thing is, some neurons think better than others. Some people think better than others. Uh, some neurons kill themselves with alcohol or lack of stimulation, okay? You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Great ideas are like a symphony. They start off with one individual, but it takes a group to beautifully implement it. So when we're talking about people or culture or knowledge, we're talking about it like it's a brain. Take a bunch of slow, stupid things, put them together in parallel, let them freely communicate. They'll have a bunch of bad ideas, but they'll have some good ones, and the system will evolve into an exponential growth of knowledge. Ideas need to evolve. Let the bad ones die. Let them die quickly, but let them evolve to die. Good ideas, if they're good ideas, will exponentially grow and prosper. So cut the secret of waste. Uh, Steve Jobs had a quote, and again, I wanna get this right. You cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So no matter how much you try and plan this stuff, it's not gonna happen. Now the other thing is, the whole mantra of TED is, ideas worth spreading. So that's what we're doing. If it's a good idea, send it out there. It'll grow. If it's a bad idea, let the thing die. <sighs> so please, uh, really what I want to see is people making a metadata karma deposit. Communicate freely, open up the ideas, uh, you know, let this exponential growth uh, occur. Now, I want to read some quotes. Uh, 
We're gonna talk about the now fallacy because people think now is too important. Now, actually, I should talk about it right now. Um, now is the most important time in human history, and now we understand the universal truth of the universe. People believe this, and no, it's not true. Okay, so, history is the present. That is why every generation writes it anew. But what most people think of as history is the end product myth. What experience and history teach is this, that people in government never have learned anything from history or acted on principles. And being American, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, those who cannot learn from history are doomed to repeat it. I have but one lamp by which my feet are guided, and that is the lamp of experience. I have no way of judging the future but by the past. Okay, now exponential growth in volume, uh, data, information, uh, data and information volume is exponential. The transmission speed is somewhat linear, so I can give you examples from 1889, 1945, 1948, to show that basically information isn't traveling at the speed of light even back then. But the volumes have drastically increased. So, people like to think in linear terms because it's easy. People like to think that they're important. People like to think that the situation that they're in right now is crucial. But history has shown us we're not that different, we're not that special, we're just part of a chain. Now, people like to obfuscate the truth and they like to take complexity and just wrap it all in there to make them seem like they really know something. This is called the expert effect. <sighs> okay, so, um, anytime you hear the words, trust me, I'm an expert, you should get very nervous, okay? <laughs> now, uh, another quote that I like to give. Uh, Beware of emotional arguments and opinions of pompous experts. Well-meaning zealots of unquestionable, or questionable, allegiance undermine freedom of knowledge transfer. So, when people come up and they say, uh, trust me, I'm an expert, I will tell you what the truth is. Nah, they probably won't. Carl Sagan said it best. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So, a person cannot say they're an expert. What they have to do is be perceived by other people to be an expert. If you cannot quantitatively show why you're an expert, people should not listen to you, nor should they believe you. Even experts have to justify their opinions with data and logic. Period. End of discussion. We have a number of mystics and idiots out there who truly believe that subjective opinion is stronger and more beneficial than objective reality. We have to stop that. So what we need is people to believe more in data and information, logic, ideas, objective reality, yourself. You need to believe more in yourself, but be your worst critic. Any idea that you get, attack, attack, attack in every way that you possibly can to say, is this a good idea? If you can convince yourself it's a good idea, spread it out there and see if it lives. Whenever people talk about subjective opinion, belief, faith, doctrine, dogma, proprietary systems, tradition, get extremely concerned about what they're doing, they are probably wrong. Okay, uh, now just because you have an idea doesn't mean that you've actually done something with it. So communication and execution are the key. If you have an idea and if you've not communicated it, or, uh, um, communicated it or executed it, that is called a dream, okay? So don't have dreams, have knowledge. So a couple of things I want to see. Two eyes, two ears, one mouth. Use them in that order and that proportion. Change your social contract. Stop keeping everything so secret, okay? Open it up. Share the information, share the ideas. Make bold and persistent experimentations in your life. Challenge your worldviews as to how you think about things. Dare to be wrong. Admit that you're wrong, and be as wrong as possible. Because if you're wrong, that means you're actually communicating and you're throwing stuff out there. Communicate the ideas after you have thoroughly tested them. Okay, so how do you create knowledge? And we talked a little bit earlier about how that is uh, going to occur when you uh, go through the data and the statistics, et cetera. Okay, so what I want to do is take this model but revise it a little bit. Don't start spreading out the, uh, the metadata or the knowledge immediately. Go back. Verify when you get knowledge. Just because an expert tells you something, don't believe it. Question it, verify it, 
Determine if it's true, yes or no. Only you can do that. If you believe it and other people believe it, it might actually be something real. After you get this verification, then form a strategy as to what you're going to do about it. Otherwise, it's just a dream. After you get this one, communicate it. And stop being so secretive about, oh, ooh, this is such a good idea, I'm gonna hold it all to myself. Please, okay, not the case. So what I want you to do is I want you to become an information leader. I want you to share and I want you to create knowledge and I want you to spread it out just like here what we do with TED. So TED is an excellent example of people getting together in a non, uh, par or in a parallel communicative system, spreading the ideas and as we see how the ideas work, great. If some of the ideas are bad, let them die. When people talk about luck, there is no such thing as luck except for fools and horses and I don't run very fast. Okay, and most people I know don't. So hard work consists of, well, luck consists of hard work, innovation, data, analysis. Listen to Hans uh, Rosling. When he talks about let the data set change your mindset, he's not joking. Blood, sweat, tears, put effort into these things. Time preparation. When you come into doubt, tradition, doctrine, dogma, of substantial belief, uh, people who tell you things because, believe me, I'm an expert, I must know something, don't believe them. Be lucky, but in order to be lucky, follow an equation that looks like this. Thank you very much for your time and effort. Uh, like I said, I've given a lot of links, and there's a lot of links that I've also not included in the talk, so if you go to astronomics.com and upload it there, there's all the, uh, the websites you can go to with people who are much smarter than I am. So please listen to them. So thank you very much.